Four days ago, Sieroji spoke about the ruling factors, which are the most important thing in one's whole life, in the whole life of the yogi, because with these controlling factors, these ruling factors, one can, one can control oneself so that one doesn't make mistakes, or if one does, the mistakes one makes are not so big that they cannot be, uh, that they cannot be corrected. They're not so big that they destroy one's life. So these ruling faculties are what give us the ability to um, make our mistakes practically zero. And there are nine causes for sharpening the faculties, the ruling factors such as faith. And Sayadawji spoke about these. So in order to, to see the mind and matter that are really in one's body, which are related as cause and effect, to see them how they really are, stage by stage, we have to be able to see how they arise and pass away. We need to be able to see how they come to an end. And if we have not yet seen that, how they come to an end, then faith, our faith is not yet strong. And because faith is not yet strong, the power to resist unwholesome deeds is not yet strong. And because faith also is not yet strong, effort, sati, samadhi, panya, these two are not yet there. And so one is not able to rule oneself. And because of this, because people in the world, for the most part, are not able to control or rule or govern themselves, the world is falling apart. To rule or govern oneself is very important. And the Buddha saw this and therefore he gave a method. He said that this is the method for fulfilling these five ruling faculties. And he gave these nine, uh, as Sayadawji wrote, um, spoke in the Pali, Nawaha Karehi Indriyani Tekani Bhavanti, that there are nine, uh, because of nine causes, the Indriyas, the ruling factors, become sharp. And the first of these, upanupananang sankaranang kayamewa pasati, to see. So among these, among these nine, the first four have been completed, have been talked about. But Sayadawji is going to repeat these in some. In the world, there are different countries, and these are separated by land barriers, by barriers of water. Our languages are different, and our cultures are different. And because people of the world don't know, they're not able to choose correctly. So, mostly, so in order to make faith strong, the Buddha gave a practical method, and he said, to study your own self. Do research on your own self. Not like scientists do research on what is outside of them. The Buddha said to study yourself by yourself. As Sierraji said, Upanupanana Sinkaranang Kayamewa Pasati, that in the body, 
at the moment, there are various things that happen. There's seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, bending, stretching, lifting, moving, placing. All these various things happen. And to see them as they are, when they are, to see them, when we see them, we see also that they are related as cause and effect. Mind causes matter, nama causes rupa, and rupa causes nama. What happens is not without cause. It's not random. What happens is due to cause and effect. And if we are able to observe so that we see mind and matter, nama, nama and rupa, then we know there's nothing else there inside of us. There's no soul. There's no uh, life, uh, no self, no soul to be found in there. We come to understand this well in the practice. There's nama and rupa, and if you take these two things away, there is nothing. There's nothing left inside. There's no person. There's no man. There's no woman. There's just mind and matter, nama and rupa. This is something that is not learned through reading, not learned through reflecting, not learned through listening to a Dhamma talk, nor but it's not done through all these ways. We keep sila. We, we first of all establish morality, and then we make our minds clean. And the mind then becomes clear and is able to see then nama and rupa, mind and matter. First it sees mind and matter. And going from there one stage, one starts to see how these are related as cause and effect. The cause of karma, kama, our past kama, brings about matter, physicality, or rupa. The eye base, the ear base, the nose base, the tongue base, the body base, the sense receptors through which we experience sight, sound, smells, taste, and touch. Scientists are not able to find out what is the origin, what is the original cause for these parts of the body to arise. The Buddha, more than 2,500 years ago, declared that these, are due to our, these arise due to our past karma our past actions. And at this time, if one, un if one understands how these uh, act together as the base, the striker, and the spark, this, uh, the sense base, the object that is perceived in consciousness, if one comes to know this, then later on, one will come to know how the how how cause and effect happens how the mind brings about bending how the mind brings about the act of stretching or the act of sitting standing blinking the eye this too is a case of mind causing matter mind also causes mind however many sights there are around us however many things there are to hear in the environment. One won't see anything, one won't hear anything, unless there is attention paid to this. This is the, uh, the arrow of the mind, manasikara, which turns our mind to a specific object so that we can pay attention to it. Only with that quality of manasikara, the mental quality, will, will we come to, to see or hear and so on. 
Matter also cause, causes matter. Rupa causes rupa. For example, when the weather is cold, the matter in our body becomes cold. And when we go close to a fire or turn on the heat, then the body becomes hot and we sweat. So this is how matter causes matter. And also nutrition, ahara, causes matter or rupa. If one doesn't eat, the lack of nutrition in our body makes the body weak. It makes the body um, not strong. And then if one eats and takes in this nutritive nutrition, nutritious food, then the body becomes strong and sturdy. So this is how ahara causes matter. Where is the creator in this? Each thing arises due to its own cause. We know cause and effect. And when we come to know this, we become free of the view that is called in Pali, ahetukaditi the view that there is no cause, that things just happen without a cause. There is no cause to what happens. And also when we see that each cause happens due to, each, each effect happens due to its re relevant cause, we understand, we, are, uh, we, are, we eliminate the view that is called visamahetuka deti, that is the view of fictitious, it's sometimes called fictitious cause view. This, uh, this happens when we don't know what the true cause for something is. And so we make up a cause, we insert a cause because we don't see the real cause. And so we think, for example, that there's a creator that makes us blink. So when one un understands cause and effect, then one realizes, first of all, that it's not without cause. So this wrong view of causelessness is eliminated. And one also realizes that it's not due to irrelevant causes. It's not due to a made up cause. Uh, it's, it, things have their own cause. So knowledge like this arises. So one studies oneself and the the false beliefs that one had, the wrong ideas that one have, gradually are eliminated one by one. This is concerned with every human being of every background, of every religion. It has nothing to do with religion. Science is not related to religion. Is, but science is just studying matter. When we study ourselves, this is all we're doing, studying ourselves. There are eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. These are the places where the objects are received, where we perceive senses. These are the places where sights, sounds, smells, taste, touch, and thoughts are received. So there's, these are receptors for sense. If there's no receptor, then there's nothing that can be perceived. Nothing can be experienced if there's no receptor. So the receptor, when the visible object strikes the receptor, then the image is seen because there's a receptor, the sound is heard, the taste is tasted, the smell is smelled, the touch is the touch, hot, cold, and so on, is felt. And uh, although Westerners think that this happens in the brain, uh, Easterners think that mental objects, such as uh, thoughts, thinking of seeing things in the mind, hearing things in the mind, as though we see, as though we hear. 
these two happen when the when one of these objects strikes the receptor and Westerners think that it's the brain that is receiving these mental objects but in the Buddhist scriptures it's the heart base that receives mental mental objects such as images uh, not real not real physical images but as those seen so in all these um, if there's an object that strikes its relative relevant sense base then there will be knowing that object there will be sight sight smell taste touch sound thinking so these this knowing these are all the sparks it's the base the striker and the spark or um, this is how it's called in one way the sense base the object that strikes the sense base and the consciousness that arises so these are sparks knowing the object and in the moment of any sense experience there's just this just the sense base and the object striking it and the spark of knowing the object at that moment so when one sees this then one knows that this is all there is there's no person in there so each each thing occurs in its own time and when we practice satipatthana it's like doing research on ourselves in a laboratory so as we observe our mind and body we come to see uh, that this mind and matter all of all of this that happens in us it arises and it passes away there is nothing that does not arise and then pass away that's why these are called sankara sankara means things which come together when causes come together that thing arises so it's dependent upon its causes and these this is what is happening at the six sense doors that sense objects are being perceived and uh, uh, this is a, a this is how things come together due to causes so every time a sense experience occurs it is happening due to causes everything that we experience happens arises due to a cause so seeing this we come to see how they arise and then pass away and one also then comes to see what they have in common so once we can observe the true nature of mind and matter then we come and then we continue to observe we see how they all arise and then pass away how they are not satisfactory and how they are just process they have they have no inherent self so when we see how things arise and pass away in this way our faith becomes quite strong before we just thought that this was true but now we see it for ourselves in a real way and we accept it we come to acceptance so this is the start of the power of faith so when our faith when we see in this way then if someone comes to us and says no this isn't true this thing arises and doesn't pass away this thing is permanent one won't believe this because uh, one because one one will not believe anyone who comes and says like this and so meditation is for making this power strong yogis are hearing at the present moment how 
mind and matter are related by cause and effect. The yogis are hearing and the sound waves are coming. But if one's ear is deaf, one won't hear. The sound is coming and striking the ear. But if one is thinking about something else, then one, one won't hear the sound. There is a cause to hearing arising. There needs to be an ear and the sound striking the ear. When the sound strikes the ear, then there's knowing of the hearing, hearing consciousness. One knows the sound. There's hearing contact and hearing feeling, the feeling that occurs due to hearing. So if there's no ear present, then can any creator command us to hear? If there's no sound happening, if there's without any sound striking the ear, can hearing possibly happen? Not a thousand uh, creators can make hearing happen without the ear or without the sound. So those who believe in God don't understand about how cause and effect works. If one understands how, how uh, cause and effect works in one instance, for example, if one understands how cause and effect happens in the moment of hearing, how matter causes mentality, then one will also believe that, believe in the other ways cause and effect happens. One will understand that mind also creates matter. Mind also is the cause for mind to occur. And matter is also the cause for matter to arise. So the, when one encounters these, one un, in one's practice, one, one believes. So one is free of doubt regarding this, but not completely, because that only will happen at the state of, stage of sotapanna, sotapanahood. The mind and matter, nama and rupa, that is occurring in us as cause and effect, that is sankara, due to arising, due to causes coming together, they all arise and then pass away. Seeing arises and then passes away. Hearing arises and immediately passes away. Smelling, tasting, touching in the body, softness arises and then passes away. Coldness, heat, hardness, it happens and then it's gone. Thinking, imagining, these two arise and then are gone immediately. They all are like this. And before we see this practically, we need to accept that this is true. This is faith. And then there needs to be the desire to practice in order to see this really. One has to then come to a center like this so that one can undertake the practice. And in undertaking the practice, one can't do so carelessly. It's said that tata sakacha kiriyaya sampadeti, that in doing the work of observing so that we are able to, um, to come to see how things come to an end. We have to work to develop Vipassana knowledge respectfully and meticulously. As Sayadaji said before, one has to perform acts such as sitting down, standing up, 
bending and stretching, any type of action that we perform like this has to be performed as if we were a sick person. When we sit, we have to try to observe every single rising, every single falling. So only when we work like this with care and respect for the practice, then only then will we be able to see how mind and matter, nama and rupa, arise and pass away. This is a cause for us to come to see like this. As we need to work respectfully, as we are working respectfully, we also have to work continuously. So this means that as, although our postures change, our body may be doing various things, bending, stretching, lifting, moving, placing. There are various postures, large and small. There are, are the physicality, the matter, rupa, is changing. It, it's, uh, it appears in various ways. The mind occurs in various ways. It's changing. So one has, but although all these things have many, many various ways of occurring, one has to keep one's observation constant. That means that there can't be any gaps in our observation. So we have to work uh, continuously to try to fill up the gaps in our observation. We have to keep on trying to fill these up. When it rains, if, if the roof has holes, then the rainwater will come into the house. So when we practice, too, we don't want to have holes in our observation. We need to fill up. When, when something is needed, we need to fill up that gap, fill up that need, so that our practice, can, so that one moment of observation is followed immediately by another moment of observation, by another. There shouldn't be any gap between one moment of observation and the next. So one has to work in this way. Uh, try to keep one's observation occurring all the time. If we don't try to observe the immediately arising object, if we miss the object, then what enters the mind is ignorance, the scattered mind, and the quality of not being disgusted by unwholesomeness, not being afraid of unwholesomeness. These factors occur together with the unwholesome mind, akusula consciousness. So, Sirajji said, not observing, not knowing, kilesas come in. This is what happens when we don't observe. Kilesas come into the mind, mental defilements. But observing and knowing, kilesas come clean. We're, we eliminate these impurities when we observe and know. In working like this, with faith, respect, and continuity. There are seven things that uh, sh we need to have that should be suitable for us. And the first of these is the su suitability of dwelling, avasa sapaya. So this means that we need to be free, be able to meditate in a place that's free of humans, free of human noises, and so on. And the second is gojara sapaya. For the monks, that's related to their alms round. And uh, f as far as male and female yogis, Sayadawji thinks that everything is, uh, there's nothing to worry about as far as suitability of, of resort. 
and basa, basa sapaya. That means that uh, the instruction we hear should be suitable. That and what we are hearing is the teaching of the Buddha as instructed by the late Most Venerable Mahasi Sera. So this is, uh, this category is also complete. We are hearing these suitable instructions. Pugala Sapaya means that we should have the suitable good friend to teach us. So here the monks uh, teach us as though as, as if they are a relative, helping their relatives. And Sero believes that this factor is complete also. Bojana sapaya is the suitability of food and drink. So foreign yogis don't, aren't getting the usual foods that they have back home. And so they have to be patient with the food. However, if it's nutritious, then that's what's most important. And we are working here to make, uh, to make the food suitable in this way. Udu sapaya means suitability of weather. And here, it's a bit cold in the, in the evening and in the early morning. And in, at the noon time, it's a bit hot, but there's no danger if one doesn't, uh, there's, it's not, the weather is not dangerous to one. So one can moderate, one can, uh, one can live in a moderate way in this, in this weather. Then iriya pata sabaya, that means suitability of posture. We don't just sit, we don't just stand, we don't just walk, we don't just lie down. We sit and then we walk and then sit. So we work to balance the postures. So this too is suitable. So all these seven factors which need to be suitable, Sayadaji feels that these are all suitable here. So we need to uh, rely on these seven suitable things. These are causes for us to be able to come to see the arising and passing away of, of mind and matter, nama and rupa. Because one observes as instructed with these factors, you know, yeah, uh, making sure that these factors just mentioned are complete, just in one day, one's momentary concentration, kanika samadhi, will not yet be developed. If we take each moment of observation individually, it's quite weak. But if we gather these weak things together, if we gather these moments which are very weak individually, for one minute, or if we gather, gather them together for one hour. Although individually these are weak, when they are combined, their power becomes amazingly strong. And this is kanika samadhi, momentary concentration, the power of concentration.